Hi there. Okay, in this video, okay, we're going to be talking about Elliott wave analysis. Now, I will tell you um, right now that Elliott wave analysis is still relatively new to me. Um, there's a lot to cover in Elliott wave analysis, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the basics, okay, to work from, right, because I'm still a student of Elliott wave analysis, okay, and there are a lot of variables to take in, and I just do not have the the time to study it full time. So what I have done is over the years, as I've taken like 10 minutes, 20 minutes here and there out of every other month or what have you, every other week, you know, and trying to absorb the information and and then um, you know try and put it into practice. Okay, but I know if, um, I know the Elliott wave analysis, you know, for the most part. All right, so I will give you basically what I know um, about Elliott wave analysis. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my whiteboard or my little cheap um, desk uh, notepad here. Okay, and I'm just going to draw out what this will look like. Okay, it's, it's not the formation is not going to be exact um, when you when you do it, but I will just basically get these out of the way first of all. Alright, so just give me a little, a little moment and I will get these done. Alright, this will be like a wave here and then we'll do another one. It might not be to scale, okay, but I will do my best to try and get those done. Alright, and this will be down to here. Okay, alright, let me give me have a colour pen out. Alright, at this point now, when you draw um, an Elliott wave, basically where you start it from it depends on where the trend is coming in so if we're coming in from a downtrend we want to find a major high okay and then watch it come down to find that major low and then from that major low is where you start your Elliott wave analysis okay if you start your Elliott wave analysis inside um, a downtrend that hasn't been completed um, or a low that hasn't been met yet then what you might find is that you actually found an Elliott wave analysis um, form like a formation actually appearing inside another Elliott wave formation alright so we can get around it by starting off at the beginning okay finding that major high then finding that major low and then working from that major low and then just work with our analysis all the way through and we're going to be using the Fibonacci tool as well okay to help us to get an idea if our points that we actually mark on the chart are correct okay now this is where it gets a little bit difficult all right but we will we'll move on to the chart in just a little moment but I just want to show you basically what this will look like and this probably will go into like a part one and part two video all right but I'm going to just try and zoom in here and uh, try and get most of this done all right so here will be wave one this would be like a wave zero count because you just found a major low but if you're inside like a halfway through a trend then this won't be a wave zero it will probably be something completely different alright so here is um, wave two okay here is wave three and here is wave four and here is wave five and here is wave A oh, I bet you I, I caught you there right I bet you were going to say that was wave six alright and here is wave B and here is wave C. Okay, now there's some basic rules that you need to follow. Okay, now wave wave three oops, wave three. Okay, now wave three is equal to one point six one eight times wave one okay and that what that's basically saying is is that the length from here to there and the length from here to there is 161 uh, well 1.618 times the length so this could be like a hundred pips folks from this distance to this distance could be a hundred pips for example alright so then we need to basically add another 61.8 to that so this distance from um, wave 2 to wave 3 will be 161.8 um, pips okay and that's what it basically means here wave wave 3 equals 161.8 times what wave 1 so whatever that is is there then you just basically times that 100 pips by 1.618 and then you will get 161.8 and that distance from here to there will be 161 pips I hope that's made sense 
okay now wave five wave five equals wave one and what this means is that wave one from here to there equals a hundred pips and by rights from this point right right here where wave three is to there is a is um basically 100 percent so the way they actually draw this out is that this would equal 1.000 okay um and then from this point here down to here it's also 1.000 zero okay and this distance from here as we've already just discussed okay is 1.618 okay and this distance from from point 2 to point A so this distance here, how can I actually draw that in? Uh, maybe I can draw that in like so. So this distance from here to there is 0 0.618. Um, 0 0.618. I wish I had like a rubber that we could actually rub something out rather than actually um, removing all this screen draw pen on there. Anyways, um, all right, so we've got that marked on there. All right, just bear with me for one moment. All right, okay, so now we've got a retracement area here from there. So whatever that distance is will be 0 0.382, okay? And, okay, that's, that's good. So let's get back into these um, principles here. Now we've got wave Two equals zero point six one eight times wave one. So basically, we need to calculate the distance from here to there. So that if that was basically a hundred pips, we want to find the wave two point projection. Okay, and we basically calculate. 61.8% um, into whatever this move is so that will be 61.8 pips so by rights that this should come down by 61.8 pips and that will form wave 2 okay and then we've got wave 4 and we've got wave 4 and this is basically equals 0 0.382 times wave Three. and all that's basically saying is in order to find wave 4 we need to calculate 0.382% of wave 3 okay so whatever this move is from wave 2 up to wave 3 could be 161.8 pips like we was talking about before because it was a 61.8 um, extension on from wave 1 up to to form wave 3 so we've got 161 pips there so that 161 pips time 0 0.382 will come down I don't know um, say 40 percent so 60 so that will come down probably like 40 pips or so all right so from here to there it could be like 40 pips all right and that will give you your projection point from points um, three and then you can go short here and then hopefully target wherever you think point four would be okay so I hope that's made some sense now there are there are three basic rules um, to the Elliott wave analysis Okay, and the first rule is is that wave two, this one here, can never retrace more than one hundred percent. All right, so basically, this when wave one is being formed, and you start seeing it um, peel away or pierce away from the wave one area, it cannot come down lower than this start of the wave one. If it comes down lower, then it's a fouled wave. And you most likely will see a, probably a reversal. Okay. The second rule is wave four may never 
and I repeat, may never end in the price territory of wave 1. Now what that basically means is, is that you see that this is wave 4 right here. Okay, now this is where wave 1 is, okay. Wave 4 can never extend down to this area, into wave 1's territory. Okay, if it does, it's a failed wave. Alright, and then you need to restart your calculations again, which can be a murder. Alright, now you've got wave 3. Now, the out of the three impulse waves, now I haven't actually discussed what impulse waves are. Okay, now impulse waves, I'm going to write this down here. I'm going to explain what impulse waves are before I get into the third rule. Impulse waves are wave 1, wave 2, wave 3, wave 4 and wave 5 okay then we have what's referred to as corrective waves corrective excuse my my type in here or my my mouse writing okay and corrective waves are wave A wave B and wave C okay so wave 1 2 3 4 5 those are impulse waves and a, B, C are corrective waves. All right. So our third rule is that out of the impulse waves, all right, but we're going to be out of the impulse waves one, three, and five. Okay, wave three, this one here, can never be the shortest. All right. So this one from wave two to wave three, that line or that distance can never be the shortest one. It cannot be shorter than the distance of you know, from point wave one, and it cannot be shorter and then the distance from here up to point five. Okay. Now, um, now if if it wave three is normally what's referred to as um, an expansion wave or an extended wave. Okay. So once you've identified where wave one is, you can probably project um, a good area for wave three. Now, what's also interesting is you notice that how I've actually placed like wave one and it says right okay this is like one hundred percent this represents one hundred percent right now what I've actually seen is that this actually works out to like two hundred and sixty one point eight percent all right because we've got a move well it's around about that sometimes it's maybe like about two hundred and thirty eight point two it really it's, it's a, like from and what I mean here is basically from round about from here all the way up to wave five so you can basically work out what wave 5 might be by using wave 1 and times in wave 1 by 161.8 or times in it by um, 138.2 um, point, point to try and get wave 5 okay um, so yeah so the wave 3 will always be the extended wave okay so it always be it always will be the longest one out of the, the out of the whole lot all right now also remember as well, I mean I'll have to repeat this quite a few times, is always remember that wave 1 will always retrace at least up to around about 61.8. If it retraces um, down to like 38.2 then it's not really classed as a wave 1. It most likely will be classed as a wave 3 to form a wave 4 point. Okay, um, so with that in mind, okay, I'm going to take this screen draw pen off and I'm going to go over to our forex chart I'm going to show you what it basically looks like. Okay, and um, what I've basically done is I've took a look. And this is on a four-hour time frame, and I've took a look to find out where there were major highs and lows. So there's like a major low, there's a major high, and this came down a little bit more, and it formed like another major high. And then what's happened now is this major high is now giving us a major low down the bottom here. So I basically I started from down the bottom. All right. So I've got my wave one, my wave two. Now this, here is another thing as well that I could probably tell you about right now, is that when you start off to find your first wave, okay, like this wave one, what you will find is that there are going to be five waves, okay. Now this is a key to finding all of your waves. Sometimes you will find um, areas in the market that don't have waves inside waves, and that basically means that extensions haven't been um, located. Okay, to uh, you know, to to try and um, put put your next points in, all right. And then when it comes down, you should actually see the uh, the corrective waves A, B, C, 
all right and then you go one two three four five which will form way three and then a b c will form way four and then up again one two three four five and then back down again a b c all right if you follow me I hope that's made some sense. Now I'm just going to go into part two for the moment, so I'm just going to clear this screen draw pen off and I'll see you back in part two.